It's like this assembly line of young, skinny, white, mostly blonde girls, younger versions of me. And they use them up and they spit them out. There's so many cases of labor abuse. It's going to take a civil rights movement. These are businesses. They're not set up for the purpose of trying to lure attractive men or women for some type of ulterior motive. It's a hidden part of the industry. You know, you're so in the camera, but at the same time, like, the reality of what's behind the camera is not known. I was 16 years old and I went to the mall. We were walking around in the food court eating pizza and a small agency saw me and approached me. I never had thought that I would become a model so it just kind of happened upon me. The idea of the money was really um, exciting and you know, I think it's that thing of you think you're making a lot more than you actually do. I was a director in New York City for many of the more well-known modeling agencies uh, for 25 years. For a young person, it was very exciting to be working with supermodels and fashion. We were their friends, we were their protectors, we were their moms, we were everything to them. And many of the modeling agents would let them down. I was attracted to the industry at first because I saw it as a place where there were a lot of creative, talented, smart women. And it's, I think, a business that should empower women, not exploit them. The business model of a modeling agency is to take the risk on these young models. You invest in them. And if those girls start to work, they start to make money. Let's just say it's $5,000 for an eight-hour day. Off the top of that $5,000, the model pays the agency 20%, so that's $1,000, and the client pays the modeling agency an additional $1,000. So a modeling agency can make anywhere from 30 to 40%. Often models will be charged a lot of fees in addition to the commission, so that might be for the model apartment, for comp cards, for messenger services. While some deductions might make sense, the fact that the model isn't asked in advance is a real problem. It might seem like, oh, it's a dollar here, it's a dollar there, but when you add it up, it's thousands of dollars. These are a lot of the different financial statements. I can't even understand what more than half of these items are. Every now and again, we see like an FE. You see this little fee over and over again. Looks like I got my hair done for $75. I don't know what 68 degrees was. For messengers, for FedEx, for messengers. And then of course they take their commission. And then even though this number still looks kind of nice, I'm gonna to have to pay taxes on that number because taxes aren't taken out because you're freelance as a model. There's years where you can make $5,000 and then other years where you can make $200,000. If you don't know whether you're gonna work, when you're gonna work, where you're gonna work, how long you're gonna work, or how much you're gonna get paid, how can you be an employee and have a salary? You sign a contract to an agency and you can't work outside of that contract. So the idea that there's no employment relationship there I think is uh, a little bogus. Why would any agency spend money trying to cultivate somebody's career and at the same time try to exploit them and make money off extravagant rental expenses? These are all incidentals. And I'll tell you, if you add all these costs up, they'll be minuscule. The very people who are supposed to be representing our interests are the ones who are preventing us from having any kind of basic protection. How well will an agency do if it makes a practice of overcharging people on anything? It's not a good business plan. When I was still modeling, I ended up putting myself through school and I am now a labor and delivery registered nurse. It took me to move on to another career to fully understand the scope and to also feel the courage to speak up. If we're paying all of these expenses year after year after year, we should be able to be shown some sort of related receipt. I think because it's a mostly young female workforce, our concerns have been trivialized and dismissed. I think a, a young, beautiful woman, I mean, it's a question of 
whether she's being exploited or not. I don't think they're being exploited. I would never let my son or daughter become a model. I don't think that it would be the end of the business to expect agencies to be financially transparent. We're not asking for very much. It's a business which is self-regulated, but for the most part, is very clean. If you're constantly finding a new, like, 22-year-old who just sees, like, bright lights and isn't gonna ask questions, it's very easy to perpetuate this. And then they go away, they go back to Oklahoma, and they ship the next girl in.